tried to sketch out my um, snowman from my, where I drew on my plastic, and he looks a little crazy eyed to me. So I'm just going to sketch him on my canvas because we, we can't have a drunk pumpkin. Not a pumpkin, a snowman. Okay, so I'm gonna go about halfway up my canvas and I am going to give him his belly because we do want to be able to add our buttons. So we, he's gotta have a big old snowman belly. So I'm gonna just go about halfway up and I'm just gonna come around and give him his belly. There we go, just with my pencil, all right? There's his big old snowman belly. Of course, he's gotta have a big old snowman head too, doesn't he? <laughs> Richard is back in full force. I love that. All right, so I'm gonna extend this out just a little bit. All right, so now he's gotta have a snowman head too. And he's like looking over his shoulder, looking at us. So I'm gonna give him, I want a little bit of room for a hat, maybe-ish. You know, a little something like that. So we're gonna give him just um, about halfway. It still looks a little drunk. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint this. I'm gonna paint my background after. I'm gonna go ahead and put some white paint on his belly and here, and we're gonna paint his hat black, and we're gonna get started, and then we'll come in and we'll, I'm just gonna do it, y'all. I'm just gonna do it. We're gonna come in and let's put his nose in. You might wanna bring that hat down too. Y'all are getting to see all the gory details of how I changed my mind 47 times. All right, it's nose. So we're gonna come about, close to the middle, but not quite. And we're gonna give him his nose, wiggly, no carrot is straight. So give him his nose. And then we're gonna add his little rocks, his coal mouth. I like five. So we got one, two, three, four. And we'll give him one little one up here, five. And then we'll do his eyes as well. All right, so. And they're all wiggly because it's cold, right? It's not perfect. He doesn't have perfect eye shapes. Okay, so anyway, let's grab a plate and just get started painting. And I'm gonna use that one. You can't even see it because I got no vertical space. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a coat of white. And we'll add the black for his hat. And we're just gonna, we're just gonna paint, all right? So, while we're painting, if anybody has questions, if anybody's on the fence about joining us over in our art community, just holler at us and we'll answer any questions you might have. So I'm gonna use a larger brush because we're gonna be putting on, we're gonna be putting on, yeah, I'm gonna uh, paint him up a little bit and then do my tracer because I may change I may change him up a little. So I'm gonna use this one inch, is that a one inch? Oh, it's a three quarter flat, uh, fairly decent size brush because it'll go on faster. So I'm just gonna grab up my white. We're gonna get a coat of white right on his little belly. Yeah, Angela, I might, uh, change my mind and move things around a little bit. So I'm gonna wait until I get like the basics on before I sketch that. Because I brought my little, my little pad. And, but thanks for the reminder. So again, you might have to remind me again before we start doing something else. <laughs> so we're gonna get that white paint on. Just freshen it up. And while we work, let's see how messy I'm being. I'm just like slap, slappy, slap it on. In the shattered circle, there is no wrong way to paint. You paint your way, you paint your color. And then we just clap and applaud. 
All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna paint right over his eyes because we, I know I can do those again, those are easy. I wanna get his face shape right. So we'll just get that white paint on. And then we're gonna do a little detail work before we do his uh, other parts. I can't wait to put those buttons on and we're gonna add actually a scarf too. See, there's a reason I didn't do the tracer yet too because I forgot his scarf. Yeah, I'm gonna blame it on the knock to the head. Everything is gonna get blamed on that now. Yep, everything. All right, so I should have used watercolor pencil, but that's okay. So now let's go ahead and let me, I'm trying to think. My brain, y'all, not doing that great right now. Oh, Madison, uh, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen video, I've seen pictures of that, Richard. Uh, Let's see. I'm gonna draw this. Actually, I'm gonna do my black as well. Let's go ahead and add our black. I'm gonna grab a different brush. And let's get our hat done. And then we'll, cause it's kind of throwing me off. And then we'll um, add a scarf. We'll dry it up, add our scarf, and then we'll start doing all the good stuff. So, I'm just gonna use a different brush just because I don't wanna mix my whites and my blacks. I'll have gray and... So this is our hat. And don't try to make it perfect either, okay? Frosty is not a perfect snowman. So let's give him a little personality. And whoops, see, there's some personality right there. And let's go right off the edge of the canvas. You can continue around that canvas if you want to. I'm not. And so that's the brim. And then we're gonna just take it up a little right here and just bring it off the edge. I had it over a little further, but I'm gonna do my painting and then see if I wanna take it that far. And I don't think I do. Maybe a little further, but not too much. Not quite as far as I had it. So we're gonna leave that. And I'm gonna draw this up real quick. <laughs> Y'all, this is seriously, um, Cindy in the raw. Let's get it raw. I'm gonna add a scarf. Thank you for the sprinkles. So yeah, if you're in the shattered circle, I also didn't have five seconds to get the mitten from last night posted, but I'm gonna get that done before I leave here tonight. And so you guys will have that as well. You go, Richard. I've lost um, 36 pounds. Yay, us. All right. Let me just get this good and dry so I can sketch in a scarf. And I'm going to grab a watercolor pencil instead of that's a uh, pencil I'm using. I knew better. What color scarf do we want? Do we want red? He's gonna have red buttons, right? So let's use this. Let's use this. For the scarf, I'm just gonna use an orange watercolor pencil too. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm about three pounds from my goal, so I'm super stoked about that. I feel so good. It feels so much better. 
Um, so let's see, we're gonna take a scarf. We'll just kind of get them a little up here. We'll make our little knot. This pencil is terrible. Grab another one. We'll make a little knot in our scarf right there. We'll bring it back over. And then we're gonna take off of our knot, we'll take a little bit of a flyaway scarf, and then we'll bring it down here as well. We'll make that a little bit bigger. We'll bring it out, we'll fly that away. All right, so let's go ahead and base coat that in with our red. I'm trying to decide. We'll use a cherry red for that. We'll get all our base coat colors in. Then it'll be easy to do our tracer. All right, so let's get this in, because this is probably gonna take more than one coat. A little too much water still in my brush, and you'll know that if it just uh, is thinning down your paint. So let's... Bring that up and we'll give it some fringe as well. That'll be in all the details. It's all in the details. Okay, there's one coat of red on that side. Let's do a little red on this side. I'm being very messy, y'all. I don't know <laughs> if it's just me today or the bump on my head, but I'm being a little messy. Like uncontrollably, it's like, I didn't mean to do that. It's not my intention. It's kind of like my snowman looking a little drunk. Let's push that up. Well, we're gonna get through it, right? There's no bad arts. No bad art. Well, there is, but it's all relative. Even Somebody even likes bad arts. Let's get our little center knot done. And we'll get the part around his neck. And, all right, there's that. <sighs> so we had a good start here, and these are gonna be adorable. We'll, we'll lay them out after we get everything painted. We'll lay our buttons out and see what buttons we want to use. But they're so cute, I'm so excited about that. So excited, and we're gonna use blue and white to paint our backgrounds after we're done with our snowman. All right, I'm gonna real quick add a little bit of red spice. That's my carrot color. Just a tiny bit of red spice to his nosy rosy. And I think we'll be ready. So I'm gonna turn this a little bit so I don't get my arm in that red and we're just gonna put that orange on for his nose this little carrot nose so i don't know about you guys I, i've lived in the south my whole life so we don't really get that much snow like snowman worthy how many of you guys have actually built like 
a seriously awesome snowman. Because when you live in the South, that is just not something that happens. Because if it snows here, it usually snows, you know, once a blue moon, an inch or two, just to make everybody's car dirty, and then it melts the next day. And it just causes chaos. We have wrecks, we're crazy because we don't know how to drive in the snow. <laughs> And uh, yeah, some of y'all have build igloos. <laughs> Woo, that's crazy. Igloos, how do you build it? I guess you just make blocks out of the, um, out of the snow, is that what you do? Okay, so I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna dry this so that I can go ahead and sketch them out on my tracer so that y'all will have the exact same snowman as me. Look at y'all, eight foot tall, oh my goodness. And this, yeah, we do. <laughs> Dirty snowman, that's true. Apollo space capsule? That would be so, yeah, we do uh, sand castles. We don't do two snowmen. Yeah. I don't really have any desire to live anywhere where there's a lot of snow. Snow drifts up to six to eight feet. Joan, bless you. That's a hard no for me. That is a hard, fast no. Let me see. All right, I think that, I'm gonna hit it one more second and we'll turn that down. Pigeon Ford, yep. Igloos and snowmen, y'all are crazy. We have had, I've had snow cream maybe once in my life. So I'm just gonna use this same pattern that I sketched on before, because I can erase. And I am going to just use my marker to do the real thing, and then I can erase the rest. So let me grab my marker. I'm gonna tape it down too, so I don't mess up. Uh, this is odd for me because normally I do my tracers before I do my painting. And so this is different, but let's just go with it, right? Let's go with it. So we're going to start here. This is our actual snowman. All the way down. Let's do our scarf. Whoops, be still. Be still now. And we're gonna do fringe in our details. So this is what you get when you're a member of the Shattered Circle. This is what we call a tracer. It's a printable. You get a PDF document with this loaded in so you can just download it and print it right off of your computer, right off your computer, and you have a tracer. So let's do that. There's his cute little nails. We'll give him his hats. So yeah, this is one of the benefits of being a Shattered Circle member. So let me find his eyes. We're gonna do can't see his eyes very well. Um, right here. And his mouth. We have some little black glass that we're gonna use for his mouth. Okay, I think we're good. And then I'll erase all that. Um, we'll do that. I'll erase all that pencil mark before I before I scan it. I love ice cream or snow cream. We've only, I've only eaten it once when it snowed really, really, really heavy back when I was probably in my 20s. Uh, so I haven't had it very much, but I do think it's fantastic. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and start on our details. So I'm gonna use my white again, and we're going to just put a quick coat of white 
just in some areas. And I'm gonna put some of this gray, this is slate gray on my plate. And we're gonna use that just to detail him a little, just to give him a little shadow under his uh, scarf. And just so that we can tell he's not just a big white blob, right? He can't just be a big white blob. So we're gonna get our whites again. And I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna come right around that scarf and add more. Oops, there was some red or orange in that. I'm just gonna brush right through it. So I'm gonna come back around. I'm gonna hit my pencil line again. And while that's wet, I'm gonna come around the outside of my scarf too, on this side, this one little tendril. So we'll do that, fill that in a little. I'm gonna grab just a tiny bit of this gray on my dirty brush. I did not rinse my brush, guys. It still has all that white in it. I'm just gonna get a little bit on the corner. I'm gonna blend it in to my brush a little so it doesn't make a harsh line. And the first thing I'm gonna do is come down, see where my paint is on that corner right there? I'm gonna come down my cute little ribbon scarf with my brush and create a little bit of a shadow right around his scarf right there. Doesn't have to be perfect. I don't know if you've ever seen a perfect shadow, but just to give it a little something. Okay, I'm gonna show you that in just a second. I'm gonna do it again while my paint's wet. Get a little bit more on my brush. And I'm gonna come down the front of his little belly with that gray as well. Just to give him a little shadow on his belly. He got a shadow belly. So let me show you that. Can you see, I gotta wait until my iPad catches up, but you can see how it just created a little bit of dimension on his belly. So we're gonna keep going. I'm gonna just get my white again because this is all dry, okay? We only wet this side. I'm gonna get some white again and I'm gonna come under this scarf just right next to it with my white because I, I want to work wet on wet, right? I don't wanna work um, with dry paint, with a dry area. The blending is gonna be so much easier for you if your paint, if your white is wet when you add your gray, right? So we're gonna go into that gray again. Just go back and forth just a couple of times. That blends that into your brush. I'm gonna turn it this way so I don't put my hand in there. And I'm gonna come right along the outside edge of that scarf. We are gonna add some fringe, but that's okay. It's just gonna make it better. Just come right along that outside edge with a little bit of that gray to create some shadow. And we're almost there. I'm gonna have to keep turning him just so I can do the bits, okay? Just bear with me. Now we have this little piece in the middle. I'm gonna bring in that white under his scarf and on top. Got a little too much. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna just get a teeny bit. We have a troll again. Okay, hang on. Hang on, I got him. Confirm. Troll gone. Y'all, we are just, we are just in troll magic today, aren't we? Back and forth. And I'm gonna come up or down the side of my scarf, all the way down. Kind of messed up, but 
Sasha's trolls are getting on my skin. Y'all, I, I know some of y'all have been with me a long time. We have not had a huge troll problem in the past. And suddenly, in the last few weeks, it's like they're everywhere. All right, I'm gonna get a tiny bit more of that gray. Just blend it into your brush a little so it doesn't make a harsh line. And I'm gonna come right up under his neck, his scarf. And I wanna show you the difference that makes. I'm, I got a little bit left on my brush, so I'm just gonna offload it on his belly, just to give him a little extra, a little extra something down here. All right, so look how that kind of makes his belly pop. See, it just makes it a little three-dimensional. We're gonna do that to his head too, all right? So we're gonna take our, I should've done his head first because now my arm's gonna be in it. We're gonna take our white, and I haven't rinsed my brush yet, all right? But I'm gonna take my white, and I'm gonna just base coat the whole thing again. It's just gonna be easier. Let me scooch right up on, we'll come around his nose. I'm gonna have to turn this, y'all, sorry. Just get a second coat so you're working in wet paints, all right? I'm gonna come around his little nose. Y'all, that's probably the same guy. Frank just went and had a, another, made another Facebook page and came back for seconds. Probably. That's all right. We'll keep knocking them out. We don't need them. All right. Second coat of white all the way around, and we're going to do the same thing. So I'm gonna take some of that gray, just a teeny bit. We're gonna go back and forth on our plates. And I'm gonna come under his little nose and just pull some of that gray under his nose to create a little shadow. All right? Under his nose. And then I'm gonna just bring it around his face just a little. All right? And we're not gonna do the top, but we are gonna do the bottom, or the, the side, the end of his little nosy. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that gray and just come around. And if you get too much, I'm gonna to put too much on. Let me get a little more so I can show you how to fix it. If you get too much, see how that's too much? Just grab your brush, clean it off, Grab a little bit more of your white, kind of push it into your bristles, and then you can come back here and just go over the top, okay? Just blend it out a little. And it's kind of like an eraser. <laughs> just erase, all right? So it's no big deal. It's no big deal whatsoever. All right, so now I'm gonna do a little bit of shadowing on his face. Just up here. And we're gonna bring it under his hats. Easy peasy. I'm not doing a very good job of that. <laughs> Still not doing a very good job, look at me. What's wrong with you? You grab some whites, messed up. We'll just fix it. There we go. All right. Let's turn him back this way. He looks funny with no eyes, don't he? He looks a little crazy. Now, while we have our white out, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna work on his hat. Let me dry this just for a second so I don't have to put my hands in wet paint. 
because I'm working up here. His nose is cute, isn't it? We're gonna uh, give his hat a little bit of fun, and then we're gonna work our way down. We'll do his hat, give it a little detail. We'll do his nose, and we'll do his scarf, and then we get to the fun stuff. We'll do his eyeballs, and then we get to make some decisions. Okay, so for his hat, we're gonna second coat that black again. Let me pull this down towards me a little. Let me grab my blur brush for the black. So I'm gonna second coat that again because it's the same thing. I wanna work wet on wet. So I wanna wet this black again. Give it a good solid coat. And I'm gonna just work on his brim for now. So do his brim. And while that's wet, I'm gonna take my paper towel, I know you can't see that. I'm gonna wipe off just any of that excess black. I'm not gonna rinse, I'm just gonna wipe it off, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is get, remember how we did the gray? We just got a little bit on the corner and then we blended it out. We're gonna do the same thing with the white. I'm gonna use my green as my backdrop so you can see it better. So I'm gonna take that white on the corner of my brush I'm just gonna go back and forth and blend it so it's not really so much white now as it is gray because we blended it in with the black that was on our brush. So I am gonna bring some of that color on the very top of his brim. And that is going to create a little highlight right on his brim. I'm gonna get a little bit more swish, swish, and just give it a little more pronounced white. Just bring some of it in. There we go. Just add a little white where you want it. Now, we're gonna come in, we're gonna grab some more of that black, and we're gonna do the top of his hats. Just add that second coat. And I'm gonna offload. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that white again. And I'm just gonna hit, I think I'm just gonna hit this side. Just that front part, I'm gonna add a little more here. And maybe just a few little spots at the top. So let's look at that. Let's look at his hat. So his hat becomes a little bit more dimensional and not just a big black blob. Does that help? I actually am gonna do something that's gonna make y'all crazy because true to course, true to fashion, I feel like his hat is too skinny. So I'm gonna bring it down a little here. Just give him a little more hat down here at the bottom. Sometimes you don't know till you know, right? There. Now, look at there. Starting to come to life, Frosty is. All right, so let's work on his little sweet nose now. We still have that orange, which is red spice. So I still have some of that on my plate here. So I'm gonna add, <coughs> excuse me, just a tiny drop of Burnt Umber, which is brown. I'm just gonna add a tiny drop to my plate because we're gonna use that for a little shadow and we're gonna use our white. So let me get a brush that's clean. Water's all dirty. Can't wait to do the buttons. All right, so we're gonna use that same orange to second coat his little nose, his little carrot nose. Make sure it's nice and opaque, because it looks blotchy now, and we don't want it to be blotchy. I'm glad you do. That's the whole point. 
That's what I'm here for. It brings me great joy. So just get that second coat of that orange on. I'll come down at the bottom, bring it down. There we are. And I'm just gonna wipe this off, y'all. I'm not gonna rinse it. Again, I'm just gonna use my napkin and I'm gonna get that excess paint off, all right? Because I, if I wash it, it's just gonna be clean and we want all these colors to mud together. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in to my white, just on the tip again, and we're gonna do the same thing with that that we did with the gray and the black, okay? So we're gonna go back and forth we're creating a lighter version of that orange. And then we're gonna come around the top. I'm gonna to start at the point and I'm gonna add that tiny bit of white using the tip of my brush to the top of his little carrot nose. That creates highlight, like where light would be touching his nose. All right, let's offload, don't rinse, just offload. And I'm gonna get some of that brown we just added. Same, same concept. You're gonna go into the brown and you're just gonna swish back and forth. Just, and what that does is blends that color into your brush so it's not just a hard line. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So I'm gonna come around the end and I'm just gonna bring it around. And whoops, I did that wrong and add, hang on, it's messed up. I've got out of line. I got out of line on my color book. I'm just gonna bring it around and shadow the underside of that carrot, all right? And what you can do now, because you know no carrot is smooth like that, just take that same on your brush and just make yourself some little vertical lines just to give that carrot the dimension it deserves, okay? All right, I'm gonna rinse that off. And we're gonna go down to our scarf. Y'all, we are getting there, we're getting to the end. Are y'all ready? I wanna show you his nose close up real quick. I know it's hard sometimes to see. So there's his nose. Thank you, Lee. So on his scarf, we're gonna start with our red and I'm gonna do one at a time, okay? So we're gonna start here with our, this tail end of our scarf and we're gonna second coat this real quick. Don't dilly dally too much, it's kind of a big section. So we want our paint, we wanna work wet on wet so we don't want our paint to dry, so kinda if you can, work a little faster. If you can't, paint in sections. Like do the end or that, you know, the uh, edge and then do your highlighting and then do the other edge and do your shadow. All right, so we got all that red on. I'm gonna offload, just gonna rub it off onto my napkin. Still got lots of red paint in my brush. All right, so what I'm gonna do on the top, do you notice that all the highlights, the white add-on is on the top surface, like the light is coming from the top, all right? So I'm gonna grab up a little bit of that white on the edge of my red. We're gonna go back and forth to blend it in a little. And we're gonna come down from that end of the scarf all the way to this end with that white on our brush. You can come here and just meet yourself halfway. All right, let me show you that. Can you see? I made a little poof in his scarf too. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna wipe that off because we gotta keep moving. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of this black, just the tiniest amount, okay? You don't want it to be too much. So you're gonna grab, my brushes needs a little moisture, hang on. Just a tiny bit of that black. 
Rub it through so you're not doing it too harshly. And you're gonna come on the underside and you're gonna do that same thing. You're gonna come around that knot because that's our shadow. Hang on. You're gonna come around that knot because it's definitely gonna create a shadow. And you're gonna bring that black all the way around. Start at that end and meet yourself all the way around to create, I got out of line and I don't even care, to create that little bit of a shadow effect. If you feel it's too dark, just get a little bit of red on your brush and come in and blend it out a little, all right? It's not ruined no matter what. Voila. Okay, I'm gonna rinse and we're gonna do another sex shot. We're just gonna keep working, working it. I'm gonna go ahead and do just a second coat on that knot. So we're just gonna add a little more red. Right on the knot, just to give it that solid, opaque look that we want. We don't want it to be splotchy. I'm gonna wipe off that red. I'm gonna grab a tiny bit of white on the corner, brush through back and forth a little, and I'm just gonna make a little bit of a white on one side of that knot. All right, wipe it off, and let's do his neck area. I'm trying to keep it in view. I'm struggling because of the verticalness, but we're gonna get there. All right, so we're gonna do his little neck area. Just second coat again. He's coming together and I'm super excited about his little buttons. His little buttons. So just get that red paint on. I'm gonna wipe it off. I'm gonna grab some of that white again. Get a little bit on the corner of your brush and just swish through. Swish back and forth. And we're gonna come across that top again. That's where our highlight is. Now, I'm gonna grab a little black. Swish, swish. That was too much, too much black. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna flip this so I can get my hand in it. And I'm gonna go on the underside and on this side of my knot, all right? That's gonna make that little knot really pronounced. So it's obviously a knot and not just uh, a uh, big blob of red, right? Oh my gosh, we got another one, don't we? Hang on, y'all. William is gone. Y'all, seriously. Oh my gosh. They are out of control, aren't they? That's three. Is that three? Is that three of them? My gosh. All right. They are on a roll tonight. William is a troll. William's in here trying to pick up women. And he probably isn't really. He probably is just trying to scam people. He's trying to pick up unsuspecting women and then he'll ask them for money or something. That's the kind of trolls are out there. So we're gonna get that second coat of red on this last bit of scarf. Bring it down. Make it nice and solid, opaque. All right, let's offload. I know we have never had, I don't even know when is the last time we've had one, much less three. We're gonna get into that white again. 
We're going to hit this side of our scarf. It's just crazy. Find something else to do, William. I'm going to offload that on my napkin. I'm going to grab a little bit of that black. Tiny bit just on the corner. Go back and forth. Make sure you do that back and forth movement. That is imperative. Yeah, they, they, they need money, don't they? So we're going to come around that knot so that it really makes that knot stand out. We're going to bring it down all the way to the end. All right, look at our scarf. That really turned it from a flat red blob to an actual scarf, didn't it? Richard, are you upset because he was just talking to the women? <laughs> okay, so now what I'm gonna do real quick, I'm gonna grab, let me grab a different brush because I want, let me see if I can, and excuse me, want to add some fringe without it taking 16 years. So I think I'm going to use one of these uh, natural bristle brushes. Let's do a little test. Let's do a little test. Um, I'm going to grab one of these natural bristle brushes, which is kind of stiff. See that? It's kind of, it's kind of stiff. And I am, I'm going to do it on here. I'm going to get a little bit of this red on my brush. And I want to see if this is going to be bristly enough to make um, the fringe. So I'm just going to come out. Yes, we can do it. Look at that. That's perfect. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to get a little bit of this red on my brush. And I'm very lightly. Don't press down, okay? I need something to put my hand on. Let's put this here. I'm going to very lightly start at the edge of my scarf and just bring it out. We'll make it a little more pronounced and we'll also add with our pen. And really bring it to life. All right. I promise that's going to look better. We're going to add a little more paints, smush those bristles down, and I'm going to start at the end and just bring it down. A little more. And just bring that down to create some little bits of fringe. Very good. Very nice. Okay. Now, we need, I'm gonna put a tiny little bit more black because we're gonna add our eyes and our mouth and then we're gonna do our last little details because I am ready to decide on these buttons. Aren't y'all? I'm, well, I'm going to set my buttons here while um, I'm finishing up so y'all can be staring at them and trying to help me decide because we're going to put them here. Boom, boom. Okay, what was I going to do? Oh, our... Mouth and eyes. So I'm going to use a round brush for that. This is a... Artist Loft number eight round. I'm gonna wet it a little, get the excess out. And we're gonna just add those eyes, okay? Let's just grab up some of this black on our paintbrush. And I'm literally just gonna blob it on, okay? Just blob. Don't try to be perfect. It's coal, remember? His eyes are made of coal. Just get that black on. We're gonna do another one over here. 
and just get it on very irregular. Make this one a little bigger. Then we're gonna come down and we're gonna make his little mouth. I like, the, I like to do the first two like at the bottom, like the center of his mouth first, because it kind of dictates where everything else goes. So just add some irregular blobs with your round brush. And as, as they go up, these two are about the same size, a little bit smaller than a dime, but as they go up, they're gonna get a little smaller. And then we'll add a little bit of one right there. And we're gonna do one right here. And one little baby one right here. Okay, look at him. I'm gonna rinse this, actually I'm not. I'm gonna wipe it off onto my napkin. Not rinsing, so there's a little bit of black still left. What I'm gonna do is go into my white just a smidge and blend that in to my brush. And I'm just gonna go in his eye right here and just give him a little white pupil-y bit. And we're also gonna take just a little bit and give him a couple little dots right in his mouth, his mouth seed. Check him, he's adorable. All right, I think we're good. Trying to decide if there's anything else. Oh, his corncob pipe, that would be so cute, wouldn't it? So cute, look at him, look at his eyes. He's really came to life. <laughs> Richard said he's got cavities now. That's pretty funny. Okay, so I'm gonna dry this with my dryer so that we can keep moving forward. We ain't got time to let this dry by itself. So let's get it dry. I'm gonna move this nasty mess out of the way. Get his eyes dry. They're a little blobby. I still feel like his hat's too high, but it's okay. It's tipped back because he's got his head up. I'm so glad you're here, Deanna. Yeah, I'm gonna do the background. Should have done it before I did my fringe, but you know, that would be, that would be too easy, wouldn't it? I'm gonna add a little bit more white to my palette, and I'm gonna add a tiny bit of this blue, which is Calypso blue. And I'm gonna get a big old brush. Let's get a biggie. Yeah, y'all almost let me forget, didn't you? Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start up here by his hat. I'm just gonna get a little bit of this white, and I am gonna fill in that little bit of background. And I'm gonna grab up a the tiniest bit of that blue. It's a tiny spot, so I don't want it to be too crazy. I'm gonna add just a little bit of that blue in with his hat, all right? So we're now we're gonna come around and I'm gonna just go back and forth with my whites and my blue, give him a snowy background. Yeah, let's go around his nose. I'm gonna come off the edge a little. And I'm gonna focus mostly on, on the blue around his 
face. So I'm just gonna kind of blend that in. Let's do a little more. And I'm gonna come around the edge. I'm trying not to get my arm all in everything. All right, so I'm gonna come around. I'm gonna go under his hat. I'm gonna go around his nose and his face. Let's get a little more white. Let's go around his nose. Then I'm just gonna kind of fill in with a little bit of that blue. And I'm not even gonna go all the way to the edge. All right? That way I don't have to worry about my fringe. All right, I'm gonna grab up some of the white again. We're gonna pull it in. Right up to his nose. Around his cute little chinny chin chin. And now we're going to add some blue. To right up next to his chin. Just bring it around. I kind of like this frame out. We've done this a couple times where you're just kind of framing out. I'm gonna pull some of that blue right through there. I'm kind of digging this, kind of digging it. All right, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna fill in here with our white. Oops, that's got a big old nasty icky place. It's coming in, go all the way around. Come down and around. Now while that's wet, I'm gonna grab that blue, just a tiny bit, blend it in with my white a little. And I'm just gonna come around his little belly. Get a little more, blend it in a little. We're gonna go around his scarf. And just pull it in the way you like it. I mean, you could totally just do the background this color to start with, but you know, sometimes I like to make things difficult. This was totally, um, as you know, if you've been here the whole time, it was totally just made up and sketched up pretty much on the spot. So I really didn't think things through. But it also helps you know what to do and not to do, depending on whether you liked the way it looks or not, right? So I'm gonna add just a little blue down here and we're gonna be done. Okay, hang on, I got a little spot right here where I got some gray. I'm gonna just put my finger in that white a little and make that go away. All right, I think now, I think now we can draw him, right? <laughs> for real this time. For real. Let's do it. Yeah, it was different. And you know, some, most of the time I do paint my backgrounds uh, first and then add on, but sometimes you just need to do it by second, right? You just need to do it the way it needs to be done your way. He's super cute. I think we're gonna add a little something to his hat. We're gonna add some black to his eyes. And then we, oh, <laughs> don't melt him. And we're gonna decide on our buttons. Did y'all decide? Did we come to a conclusion? It is blustery, isn't it? Okay, 
So let's grab our pen, our infamous pen. Where is it? Is this it? No, that is not it. Is this it? This is it. All right, so this is the pen I use to, <laughs> he is single. Um, this is the pen I use for um, outlining. I don't like a solid outline. I like it to be minimal, and I'm not able to do that with a paintbrush because of, um, I have a little shaky hand syndrome, and oh, that would be so cute, wouldn't it? I don't know, that's too many buttons maybe. I do have a smaller one. Where did it go? I'll have to find it. Anyway, so um, I like to use this pen because it's easier for me to control uh, because I'm no longer type or um, capable of doing that with a paintbrush. And this I bought Hobby Lobby. It is Master's Touch is the brand. Line dot dot dot. That's right. And it's a graphic illustration marker. It has it is uh, archive quality, so it doesn't run and smear. Um, in our resin, okay? That's very important. A Sharpie will smear all over the place. Um, so we're gonna use this, and I'm gonna outline him just a little, just to give him that one more little added extra pump of goodness, and then we're gonna get started on the fun parts, all right? So I'm just gonna go up, and I'm gonna add, and I know you can't see this, but I have, I feel like I have to do it anyway. And where it's black, I'm kind of just outlining just outside the black. And I'll show you that in just a second. Let's do dot, dot, dot. <laughs> so you can see on his hat, I'm kind of outlining outside the hat so that it kind of still has that pop. We'll do that with his eyes as well. So I'm going to come around. And for this, I like short strokes. So we do about an inch and keep going. And we'll do his, we'll do his whole face. Then we'll go around his nose, and I'm not at all trying to stay in line, okay? I'm trying to be loose and fluid. We'll make a few little carrot lines. I'm trying to be loose and fluid and natural, okay? I'm not trying to stay in a line and make anything perfect. So I'm just scribbling around. And I'll show it to you in just a second. And if you don't like this on your art, then I would say don't do it because I'm 1,000% all about doing you. You do you. We're gonna enhance our fringe as well. So I'm just gonna outline and make a little dot, dot, dot. Now I'm gonna come up here where my fringe is and I'm just gonna make lines. Now that's gonna enhance that fringe a little. I need my little block back, hang on. I forgot I have colored markers. That would have been awesome too. So I'm gonna come around, I finished this side of I'm gonna go ahead and show you this up close. So you can see his nose, you can see that one fringe. You can see how I was sloppy around his eyes and his mouth, that's how I like it. If you wanna do it differently, then I would encourage you to do so. I'm gonna just go around the little knot. We'll come around, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> And we're gonna come down, round, and just do a little outline. We're gonna give ourselves some more fringe. Get after it. And we're gonna come down his belly, short, quick strokes down his belly. I think that's it, y'all. Check it out. 
So this is what this pin does. It's just, I think, I think personally, I don't know how you guys feel, but I think this personally just brings it all to life. It just kind of gives it that one last bit of something that it kind of needed. That's my thought process. All right, so while I'm gonna grab something real quick that I think we're gonna use on this hat. Oh no, uh, 11, this Christmas fun that we're having. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna have a couple of options, all right? We can do this. I'm gonna bring a few things to the table, all right? Um, I have this big bell that I love. I've been dying to use it in something, but I still think it's too big for what, for this particular thing, okay? So I like put it on his hats. Um, so I'm gonna set that aside. And I do have, this is a pick I got from Michael's. So I'm thinking about cutting off a couple of these pine cones and just putting them like right here on his hat and maybe adding a couple of these beads. Look at these beads. They look like they're sugary. Aren't they cool? This also came from Michael's, $1.99. I think they were 40% off too. So um, I think we may do something like that. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off a few of these beads so we can kind of get a visual. So let me just cut off two. I'll, I'll do three because, you know, odd numbers. Okay, I like the size of these two. So we could, let me cut off this too. Actually, I think these are just twisted on. Let me see. I'm, I'm gonna use these because I can't, I can't, I don't have the patience for that business. So we could totally put like a couple of pine cones and three of these beads on his hat or two. Three, and then, what do you think? Black. The sugar berries are awesome, aren't they? So I'm kind of digging that. We're gonna leave it like this. I'm gonna go ahead and take these off of here so we can visualize this as well. Let's see. Oh, y'all, look. So cute. So cute. Are y'all going to love this or what? So there is our black. <gasps> oh, my Lord. Oh, my heavens. Do y'all like this on his hat? So we also have red. I think the black, I think the red is going to be too much with his scarf being so red. What do you guys think? Black for sure. Black for sure. All right, what if we did this too? Hang on, give me a second. I just cut a leaf off his, uh, off here and we could totally stick that in there as well. Look at that. Super cute. Super cute. Black of buttons. That there. And this is black glass. You can, it's probably the one color we have in stock right now. And we, we're gonna kinda add just a few little black nuggets. Actually, I don't think I wanna do it to his eyes because I don't wanna mess up his uh, pupils where you can see, but we're, I think we are gonna add some to his mouth. We'll just get the right size and add these, let me get this out. And just a few little pieces. I'm trying to find the right ones for some dimension right to his mouth. Cute, cute, cute. You know we gotta have glass. 
somewhere. Look at that. What do you think? That is cute. His mouth becomes very dimensional. I like the hat. I like the little green leaf add-on. Uh, we could paint a leaf, but that's going to take more time. But you could totally paint a little holly leaf. And um, instead of this leaf, I literally pulled it off my red berries. See how it was on my berries? I literally just pulled that leaf off and tucked it on there. All right? So, this is our baby. What do you think? Is he awesome? Are we ready to resin? Yes, I think we are. Now, this I'm going to move off before we resin. I can resin right over these things. I'll probably pick that up, resin, and then put it back down. But these, I'm going to move. And black regular is black through and through. Black reflective is mirrored on one side. So it's black on one side and it has a little silver coating on the back side. So that is the difference. Um, let's make resin. I think we're going to, I'm going to use our little silicone cup again. We're going to use our little cute silicone cup again. And we are going to make, this is an eight by 16. So it's a little bigger than um, it's a little bigger than what we would normally do. I'm going to scoot this up some so you can see. But I think I'm going to make two ounces because I have something else to resin. So, let's try this. We are going to add some snow to him after we resin. I'm going to put that there so I don't forget because y'all, we all know my brain Ain't working that great right now. All right, so I'm gonna do an ounce and an ounce. And I will let you guys know um, exactly how much we used, okay? So let me wipe down my area a little bit. So I'm gonna pour my resin in one cup, my hardener in the other, then I'm gonna pour them in this cup, which is, um, I think it's a four ounce. I can't see. Gloves, gloves, I need gloves. So this tracer for this piece will be in the shattered circle. I'll try to get on there tonight, but y'all give me some grace, I've been here all day. Um, if I don't get it on, I promise you'll have it tomorrow. I promise, pinky swear. And um, we'll get it done, all right? It's not gonna be too late. So I'm gonna get my gloves on and we are going to, I'm gonna scoot this over a little and I'm gonna put an ounce of resin in one cup and an ounce of hardener in the other. Now I'm gonna show you something that we use sometimes. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but hang on. Um, we had, when we were doing our Christmas tree challenge, we had to make our own resin, okay? We did not make our own resin, but we ran out of burst packs, so we had to fill bottles for ourselves. So we used this and it just squirts out the top. So I'm gonna use this to do one ounce of resin in one cup, and I just turn it upside down and squeeze it. Slow your roll, Cindy Lou. So there's one ounce of that, and my hardener one was empty, so I'm gonna to have to use my bottle. So that's an ounce of resin. This will be an ounce of hardener. I just wanted to show you that because it's super cool. So we're going to use the hardener out of our bottle. And voila. Now I'm going to grab a stir stick. And we're going to dump both of those into our other cup so that we mix it. Is that what it's called, a FIFO bottle? It's, I love it, it's super, super fun. All right, so I'm gonna get all that deliciousness out of this cup into 
our silicone cup. So make sure you get it all out so you, your measurement is still equal as much as you possibly can. And let's get this one. And then we're gonna stir for three minutes. All right, canvas came from Dick Blick. It's eight by 16. It was one of my favorite Christmassy um, sizes because it's great for small, but not too small Christmas trees. It's good for snowmen. It's good for anything that you want to be like a um, rectangle. Love it. First in, first out. I did not know that. We call them squirty bottles here <laughs> because we are professionals. We are professionals and uh, that's what we call them. I got a little something on the edge of my cup, so I'm gonna grab a wipe and wipe that off. So we have two ounces total, an ounce of hardener and an ounce of resin, probably way more than I need, but that's okay. I will tell you how much we have left, so we'll know exactly how much it took for this canvas. And um, I'll use the rest when we're done here. All right, we ready? I'm gonna mix. Becky, are you here? Is Catherine here? I'm gonna mix for three minutes. So let's see, 7.43. So we're gonna mix this for three minutes, okay? And I'm just gonna scrape the sides of my container, of my cup. I'm gonna scrape around the sides. I'm gonna scrape across the bottom. And I'm gonna gently, you're not gonna, thank you, Becky. You're not gonna beat this to death, guys. You're gonna gently just blend and stir and blend and scrape and blend and stir. Now it is getting to that time of the year when it's probably cold in your house. So it's best, Art Resin says it is best over 70 degrees, but my house is never 70 because I'm a menopausal woman and my house is never gonna be 70 degrees. I keep my house about 67, 68 degrees. I keep the studio the same way and I don't have any problems, but cold resin is not your friend. So what you can do, make sure you keep your resin in a warm place. And if you can't do that, your bottles, I mean, if you can't do that, before you get to, before you start to pour into your cup, <coughs> you can uh, make sure your tops are on super tight and just set them in some warm water for 10 or 15 minutes. And that'll warm up your resin so that it's easy to use because if it's cold, several things are gonna happen. It's gonna be thicker and it's gonna be harder to mix and blend. And then you're gonna be tempted to blend it really fast and too long, and you're gonna incorporate a ton of bubbles into your resin, and they're gonna be really, really, really hard to get out. So when you have so many tiny, tiny micro bubbles, you're not gonna get those out even with a heat gun. So make sure you uh, work in a warm room or at minimum warm up your resin, okay? The, um, it takes longer to cure out if your room is super cold as well. So keep all that in mind. Oh, Polly, I have to tell you this too. When my dad was sick, um, he had cancer as well. And when he was sick, oh my Lord, he was cold all the time. And he had, we had to have the heat on for him as well. And it, we just sweat to death. I'm pretty sure my mom and I, <laughs> oh, Richard, you're killing me. Uh, my mom and I nearly, um, you know, we probably lost weight because we just sweat constantly when he was ill. So I get it. I totally get it. They're just cold, aren't they? Bless them. All right. Hey, Becky. All right. We should be getting there. Thank you, Becky. Thank you. I'm gonna give it one more quick swirl, scrape on the bottom, scrape around the sides, 
And we, I'm gonna go ahead and move these off and we'll place them back in just a minute. I'm just gonna get some resin on this. There's not much glass here, just a little bit of black, some buttons and some Christmas decor. Probably should put a little on his, no, cause his buttons are going there. We're gonna leave him be, all right? Not everything has to be loaded down. So I'm gonna just drizzle. I'm just, I'm gonna pour, all right? We're gonna get this onto our canvas. Just pour a little here and there after you have your glass covered. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna grab a silicone brush. Okay, just a little silicone spreader. These actually um, are originally made and used for makeup application. I don't know who's, I, I, I don't really wear makeup, so I shouldn't even say this. I wear a little bit of tinted moisturizer and eyeliner, and it's very light, and most of the time I don't even do that. But I don't know who's applying their makeup with this thing, but I just, I don't know. I just don't understand that. I, I Maybe I need to witness it and see. It just seems like excessive. You'd be putting on a lot of makeup. But a couple of my girlfriends are makeup girls. I'm just not. So I guess I should confer with them and say, how in the world are you putting on makeup with an app, a plastic applicator? That's some serious makeup application. I'm a product of the, I was born in the 60s. So uh, we use our fingers. We didn't have all these fancy tools for putting on makeup. We use our hands. Tap, tap, dab, dab, swirl, swirl. So that's confusing to me. I ain't saying it's wrong. I'm just saying I don't understand it. All right, so I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna spread some of this around. Make sure my little nuggets stay in place. All right, I think I got everything covered. I'm gonna stop for a second. I'm gonna use my hands and just go around the edges. Come around. All the way around, I see some little, um, like some debris. We're gonna get that out too. I'll show you how to get any little bits of dust particles that you can visually see <coughs> out of your resin before you walk away. So I'm gonna just tap that a little. All right, so now I'm gonna wipe this off with my finger. Real quick before we move on, I'm just gonna use, you can use a toothpick. I'm gonna use this bead tool because I see some ick, okay? I see some ick right here, and I'm gonna scoop it out with my toothpick or whatever you're using. Still didn't get it. Come on, it's like a little hair, and I'm just moving it around. It's making me mad. I got you now. All right, I'm gonna grab a little bit of that. Just some debris. Let's take a peek around. I don't see any more. A little dab of something there. Look, now, I don't know about you. If your house is perfectly clean and dust-free, because mine sure ain't. And in this studio, for sure ain't right now. So, you're going to have little dust bunnies, okay? You're going to have little tiny pieces of debris unless your house is perfectly dust-free. So my suggestion to you is don't even stress yourself out trying to get every little speck of something out of your resin because it ain't gonna happen. You're just gonna make yourself crazy, right? And nobody who I was selling a piece of art to ever said to me, there's dust and there's a little tiny speck of dust there. I don't want it. Nobody's ever said that ever, ever, ever. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is apply my leaf, okay? So I'm just gonna put a little bit of resin on the back, and this is just a little fabric leaf 
that was on my floral pick. And I am literally just going to add a little resin to it. And we're going to put it right back into onto our hat. Poke it down into that resin, right? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these. I'm going to put a little bit of resin right over the top of that. And just let it flow down that bead. I'm going to add one more right here. We'll add a little resin right on top of it and let it flow. I'm gonna grab up one of my little pine cones and I'm gonna put him right there in the resin. I'm not going to cover him with resin because it looks terrible when you cover it with resin and it also um, makes debris go everywhere. All right, so I'm just gonna lay that in there. I'm gonna do the same thing here with that pine cone. Then I'm gonna take one more of these berries and just shove that booger in. Hang on, this pine cone's making me mad. I'm gonna stand it up a little. You don't wanna act right. There we go. I'm gonna shove that last berry in and we'll put a little bit of resin, try to avoid my pine cone, a little bit of resin on the berries. So cute. Y'all, that's adorable. Okay. So we're gonna place our buttons on his little belly, okay? So I'm also going to just take a little bit of that resin and I'm gonna smear it on the back, all right? And I'm gonna take a little bit of that resin and I'm gonna smear it on the front. So it's totally covered with resin and we're gonna lay him where we want it, all right? Same thing with this one. I'm gonna get a little dollop of resin. I'm gonna, whoops, I'm gonna smear it around the back. I'm gonna get a little bit of resin. Guys, we have a whole ounce of resin left. So one ounce, I'm telling you, is gonna do the trick. We're gonna lay this one here. Oh my gosh, y'all, this is so cute. And all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the tiniest amount of resin and I'm gonna put it in those thread holes, okay? That's gonna just help with security, right? This is so stinking cute. I should have done this before I put my pine cones on, but I'm gonna be super careful. You might wanna heat up and pop your bubbles before you put your pine cones on. Don't be like me. I'm a bad example right now, but I'm gonna start at the bottom. And we're gonna just run our heat over. And I'm trying to not blow my pine cones away. You're gonna run that heat over your art piece and pop those bubbles. Don't blow your, res your pine cones away. And voila, oh my goodness, this is so cute. Oh. Oh. Um, I'm trying to read what this says. The words are so small. Colleen says, your upcoming class. Okay. I want to put in my favorite cities on my flight app so I can watch for flights and your next event. Okay, Colleen, we, um, the people who are coming to my event this weekend are flying in to the Memphis International Airport. So that is where you would want to fly in. And uh, I'm hoping that our next event is going to be in April. So keep a look out for that. All right, you could totally use a hair dryer, Julie, if your hair dryer is uh, variable speed. I'm not, I haven't forgot. So if your hair dryer has a high and low air and you can use the low, then yes, you can use your hair dryer. And so you'll want to use it on low air, high heat. Okay, so it needs to be variable. So I'm going to put some snow in my cup. 
And this is a uh, crystal luster from Hobby Lobby as well. These go and sell all the time. Bead treasures in the jewelry department. So keep your eyes open for that. We use all the kinds. I'm gonna sprinkle a little of right into his hat on his beads and in his pine cones and on the leaf because he's you know he's got snow collecting on his hat, right? I'm gonna actually turn it this way a little so I can get it right on the edge of that brim where it would really be collected and holding on. I think now we have to add a little to his nose and if some of your beads get a little crazy and kind of go where they want to go, you can wrangle them in in a minute. So I'm going to tap some on his scarf, just a few here and there. And now I'm just going to take a few in my hand and come up about six or eight inches and just let them drop here and there. Just let them drop here and there. Just random, don't try to control it. Just a few little snowflakes on his, her head, all around. All right, so if they get a little out of control, you can take a toothpick, whatever you have, and you can just kind of wrangle them, push them to where you want, because they're gonna stick right in to that wet resin. So you can totally control them that way. You can move things around, make sure it's everything is sitting where you want it to be. I'm trying to stop, I wanna move anything around. It all looks good to me. Let's see, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this looks, y'all. I'm very pleased. I'm gonna get, I got a little sticky on my hands. So I'm gonna wipe that off and then I'm gonna show you this thing close up because he is so cute. And I literally still have an ounce of resin, y'all. We only used one ounce of resin for this whole piece. One, super adorable. All right, so let me show you. There's his hat. So cute. I'm trying to find the, <laughs> there's his little face. There's his fringy, and I gotta go this way because the cord's in the way. And there's his little belly with his buttons. Is that not adorable, y'all?